Well, welcome along to the Typhoon Sporting Live preview for day one of the Cheltenham Festival. It's finally here, joined by Ben Linfoot and Matt Blockerback. Ben Linfoot about to head down to Cheltenham itself for the first two days of the meeting. Are you like a, a little boy on Christmas Eve again, Scoop? Pretty much, Dave, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. There for Tuesday, Wednesday, and the Tuesday just looks fantastic, doesn't it? Constitution Hill, John Bonnell, Fabiolo, Honeysuckle, Epiton, and, uh, and, and the Sky Bet Supreme kicking it all off. It looks, it looks a terrific day. Tremendous, isn't it, Matt? The good thing about Chelsea, you can forget all the nonsense just for four days. Can't everything that's gone before goes out the window. We can enjoy ourselves for four days. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy it. And you certainly have to shut out the noise, I think. And, and we all love the build-up. We all love the quotes, the, the sound bites, the snippets. But ultimately, you've got to bury yourself in the form button, uh, weed out the, the right horses at the right prices. Well, let's start doing just that with the opening race at the festival, the Sky Bet Supreme Novices Hurdle. Got the time form ratings up on screen for this one. It's very tight, Ben. When you look, it's Fasal Vega, but just. Yeah, it is. It's, it's been blown wide open, hasn't it, by Fasal Vega's below power run, to say the least, at the Dublin Racing Festival. And um, when, you, when you bring it all together, you've got Marine National there for, you know, we haven't seen him for 100 days. Grade one winner, of course, in the Royal Bond at Fairy House earlier in the season. Uh, you can say the same about Illite Thomas, grade one winner. And the, the cream has risen to the top there on the time form ratings, unsurprisingly, but it's, it's probably a little bit more wide open than that even. Well, we're going to have our first video clue. Now, we haven't got Fasal Vega bobbing out the Dublin Racing Festival ah. because it happened so far out that he wouldn't, wouldn't have fit on our last 30 seconds. But here he is beating Illite Thomas. This is him over Christmas when he looked as if he was on trajectory to go, go into Cheltenham as one of the bankers of the week. He did, yeah. He was uh, he was perfect in bumpers, beating all the right horses as well in the big races at Cheltenham and Punchestown. And here he is winning second time out over hurdles. He didn't impress absolutely everybody this day with his uh, with his hurdling, and some were suggesting he just looked a little bit workmanlike. I mean, you can't really look. He's got them absolutely strung out like the washing. It was a it was a very good performance. It, it probably does set the bar. I love a horse like this uh, going into Cheltenham because he has to be favourite on his bod full body of work. He has to be favourite. Favorite. But as a punter, you have to take him on. You're doing yourself a disservice if you don't oppose this horse. He's just finished 20 lengths adrift of, of, of horses that he's in against here. Look, excuses have emerged. They went too quick. I'm not buying uh, the positive vibes from the yard since that defeat. I have to take this horse on and hopefully we've found uh, some each way value against him. Patrick Mullins in this column. The Mullins of a podcast, very sweet on Fasal Vega. Thinks Diverge, spoiler alert, might finish in the first three. He's picked up an interesting outsider. Marine National, their camp, Barry Connell's up. A bit of needle with the Mullins camp. He doesn't fear Fasal Vega at all. Here's Marine National, Scoot, winning the Royal Bond. We haven't seen him for a while. They put him away after this. Have you got any worries about him being short on experience going into the Sky Bet Supreme or recent match practice? Yeah, I think both. Both are a concern. He's obviously a very talented horse. They seem buried away there in the, in the Barry Connell yellow silts with the blue sash and he he hasn't been seen for a hundred days since this day this farm has worked out pretty well you've got champ kayley there in the green and blue on the inside who who came out and frank the farm irish point the gray horse in the lead now who's who's done pretty well since as well and uh, marine national i think the impressive part of this race was there he just bunny hopped the last uh, lost his momentum and look how he finishes to reel in the the front uh, running Irish point this this was the impressive part of the performance for me you would think two miles up a hill at Cheltenham on soft ground would be absolutely ideal for him I see him probably going forward as perhaps two and a half mile horse but at this stage in his development you think the track and trip and ground are going to be perfect so it is just that just short and inexperienced and this position in the market just puts me off him a little bit tip only Scarlet Supreme. Tamaris for Paul Nichols. Matt? I'm, I've been with Chasing Fire for a, a good while. He, a bit like Marine National, jumps well. He's got a nice sort of flat pedigree. Uh, he has a lot of class. He's unbeaten. Uh, they're fairly similar profiles, to be honest. I know this horse hasn't been exposed against graded horses yet, but I really like him. Ollie Murphy's had horses run well at big prices in the Supreme before, and I think Chasing Fire will hopefully do the same. Two sporting selections there. Two British. Oh, could be good news for Phil Tufnell in the Presbury Cup there. Could be off to a flyer in the Sky Bet Supreme. Talk about great sponsorships. The Sporting Life Arkles next. So what a race we've got here, Scott. It's the head-to-head. -head. We're going to get the time form ratings up here. This, this is one of the great things about Cheltenham. The great Britain v Ireland clashes. We've got one here with El Fabiolo and John Bond. 
We have, yeah, it's it's perfect, isn't it? El Fabiolo, the farm horse, as that graphic suggests, you can't argue with that. You know, his his Goths Irish Arc win at the Dublin Racing Festival is the standout piece of form. It, the way the race was run allowed it to be that. Dyset Dynamo took it apart a bit with his effort on the front end and El Fabiolo finished brilliantly, having having laid up with a strong pace for a long way. Um, John Bon. <laughs> He's, his early form earlier in the season was superb. Really, really liked him, style and substance to his form. He comes in on the back of a different preparation, a much uh, lower key race at Warwick in a two-runner race where he perhaps wasn't at his best, but all of that in the melting pot brings a brilliant head-to-head. -head. Matt, El Fabiolo for you. Let's watch the replay of him winning at the Dublin Race Festival under Davil Jacob. And this just looks red-hot form. It's red-hot form, and I think the important thing is, is that for me, this does, doesn't strike me as a horse that this is his peak performance and this is what it was all gearing towards. He's just really starting out, isn't he? He was so inexperienced, a massive monster of a horse in novice hurdles last season. Even as an inexperienced novice last season, he was pushing John Bond close. I thought this was the emergence of a real star. It was a brilliant, really, really strong race, good deep one, uh, grade one form. I, this was just so impressive. This bowled me over. I think he'll go there and beat John Bon. Uh, they've got a bit of a score to settle from last year at Aintree. And look, this is a performance of a, of a horse really just emerging, finding his feet. And Daryl Japer's been on the, in the studio the other week and just sort of saying, look, he's going to improve and improve and improve. And I, I'd, I'd be in that camp, to be honest. Whereas John Bon, he was a little bit scratchy, a little bit scruffy in his prep. Now, obviously, he's got to spring back. But even if he springs back to what we saw at Sandown, I don't think he's going to match that form. I, I really don't. And if El Fabiolo steps forward again, um, he's going to be a, a really hard horse to beat. He's going to get beat by John Bon in his school. Now, let's, let's watch John Bon here in the King Baker. Well, I think this was his own protest against Small Runner Fields. <laughs> he decided to make this interesting. It could well have been, yeah, because he was 1-14 to 14 this day and it didn't look to be have any interest in it whatsoever. But Harry Skelton made it interesting where, with the manoeuvre down the back straight and he had a fight on his hands here, didn't he? To be honest, you know, I, I, think, I don't think this was a bad thing. I think this was a, a pretty good prep for him with the Arkley in mind because he hadn't really been in a race over fences before. He suddenly found himself in a race unexpectedly and he had to pull out the goods and he did. He jumped really well in the home straight. He pulled away by five and a half lengths at the line. And uh, I think that might have just uh, uh, got rid of the rustiness if there was any heading into Cheltenham. It's a bit of a Henderson prep, wasn't it? We've sort of seen I that think so. with kind of Bouverdere and horses like that over the years. Let's get the pace map up for the Spotlight Arkle, because I think the one thing that is firmly in John Bond's favour in this Spotlight Arkle, you, you've got Dyset Dynamo in now, th there's a gallop, and he's going to be able to take a lead over the first few fences. Lead. That's going to be a big plus for him. Oh, it's massive, and they, you know, this is going to be hell for leather with, with Dyset Dynamo on the front end, you would think, um, a bit of pace pressure around him as well. And John Bond, uh, he's going to love that. He's, you know, if, if uh, he can be settled in the early stages and pop away and uh, ease into the race and travel. He's a class horse and um, I think he'll have plenty in the tank coming around the, 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 the home turn. Late mistakes, that could be a massive issue on the old course at Cheltenham. They come uh, thick and fast, don't they? Any late mistakes on the last three fences could real derail a challenge. And with El Fabiola, we, we've seen he's got a mistake in him. We saw that far out at Leopardstown. He got away with it that day. I'm not sure he'd get away with it in this race. Unibet champion hurdle time at Constitution Hill time. The one horse who could potentially get us onto the front and back pages for all the right reasons of challenge. He could, he could on Tuesday afternoon be the highest rated hurdler in time forms history. Before then, let's look at the ratings for this race. Matt, he's, he's £10 clear of a horse in state man who's got the sort of rating that would normally win you a champion hurdle. Yeah, he has. That just shows where we're at with him already. And he's yet to win a champion hurdle. I mean, there's a, there's a very tiny part of me and, and we work with the very closely with the time form guys who are already anointing this horse and just a tiny part of me thinks are we doing that a step too soon have we really put him on this pedestal just a shade early you know if he's coming back for his third champion hurdle then then perhaps and it just shows how impressive he's been he's he's a magnificent jumper i think that's one of the things that's overlooked with this horse and we heard uh, michael buckley speaking on racing tv this week as well and talking about you know what might the future hold for this horse and he might go chasing and you know, he's, he's won his point to points, hasn't he? Whether he could be a Gold Cup horse, it, he could be absolutely anything. But we're still, uh, we're still quite early on in his career. Um, I think he's got a really worthy rival here in State Man. I, I do, Willie Mullins' horse. He shouldn't be underestimated. I, I do think Constitutional Hill will win. I wouldn't go that far. 
but I might be looking, I might be tempted into a sort of an unders bet. I know people are going to get carried away and go for, you know, over 10, 12 lengths. I might look to see if um, we could get maybe Constitution Hill to win by, you know, two or three lengths from State Man. I, I do think he's got a, a big run in in this horse, um, the last year's county winner. Let's have a look at the, the pace map for this man, because that's been the big sort of discussion going into the champion hurdle has been the gallop. Is he going to have to make his own running? What's going to go on? There are a couple of potential pace angles in there which might help. Yeah, I think I think there are chasing the militant, and I think I like to move it as well. Will be, will be up there. He's not particularly fancied by time form to be up in the van, but I think he will be over two miles at Cheltenham personally. And listen, however you run this race, Constitution Hill is not going to be inconvenienced, is he? Because he can make his own running. He can drop in, like Matt said, he's a brilliant jumper. He he's pretty faultless. This horse, it's very very hard to pick holes in him. I've got a video. This is Constitution Hill winning the. Skybet Supreme last season at the Cheltenham Festival. Now, bearing in mind the setup they had this day, Dysart Dynamo was already gone. That's John Bond alongside him. He had two high class pacemakers in the loosest sense to tee this off him. This is a monster rating. This is a monster performance. I mean, I, I'm old enough. You might not believe. I mean, I'm in my 50s. You're heading there quickly yourself, Scoop. Um, <laughs> but I remember Night Nurse, Sea Pigeon. I remember Ister Black and all the great hurdlers. There's just something about this. There's an aura about him at the minute for me, which is so exciting. He looks something different. He really does. And I was there this day and I was stood in the uh, winner's enclosure as he was doing this. And the time came through and there was audible gasps from the people in the parade ring about the time of the race and it was astonishing and it was obviously set up for him to be able to deliver that sort of performance that day but we've seen him do it again we've seen him do it a couple of times since and the way this champion hurdle set up with a really good marker in state man who is a very good horse you know won four grade ones in a row i think and uh, rated like you said like many champion hurdle winners have in the past He's a great yardstick to run him against in it. What looks like a, a truly run race as well. So we could see something really special. Matt, we've got State Man winning the Irish champion hurdle. Willie Mullins thinks he can be competitive in against uh, Constitutional. How do you think you'd ride him to get as close as you possibly can to the favourite? Um, well, he's another six-year-old, isn't he? And he's sort of, um, who has a lot of improvement to come. How you'd ride him, they were kind of forced a little bit this day. I think it's a question of... Um, Cheltenham's going to be slightly different, isn't it? I do think he will get a lead at Cheltenham, and that and that will help him. Um, Paul Townend's just sort of got the job done on the day here. I, th I think they're probably just going to take a lead. I'd like to think he'll he'll want to be in front of Constitution Hill around that first sort of um, mile or so of this race, and uh, you know Constitution Hill could well loom up. But he's not going to go down without a fight, I don't think, uh, State Man. He, he is going to put up a fight here. And Benny, he's also on the upgrade. He's, he won a counter last year when he was on the cap block. He's a proven great one performer. He's the best of Ireland. At least, at least the favourite's got something here that's either going to test him or help take that rating further north if he, if he can. Well, that's, that's the great thing about this champion hurdle because um, with all due respect to the champion hurdle, we've seen some pretty ropey ones, haven't we, over the last uh, decade or so where, no, where you've had a clear winner and um, there hasn't really been a match, has there? going into it and even though this doesn't feel so much like a match with Constitution Hill being there so far ahead on ratings etc it's great that there is another really good 170 plus horse in there um, which which could uh, yeah deliver something spe spectacular. We saw Honeysuckle finishing second there in that footage behind State Man. Let's see Honeysuckle winning the champion hurdle last year on the back of Ben <laughs> talking about below part of it. Now, these weren't great champion hurdles which was winning. But uh, Tuesday is her farewell in the mayor's hurdle. Tremendous mare, a wonderful race mare for connections, a dual champion hurdle winner. She goes for that mayor's hurdle. The problem, Ben, is for the Glovis finale, it's as deep a renewal of that race as I've known. It is, yeah. Um, she's, she has been brilliant, Honeysuckle. I mean, she has won a couple of below par champion hurdles, you would say. They go now as the sang on throws, and it's... <laughs> no, but I can, listen, I can understand why they've gone for the mares. Obviously, um, she, she couldn't beat State Man, and if you can't beat State Man, you're not really going to beat Constitution Hill, are you? So I think they've, they've, they've gone for the race that she's got the best chance of winning. And to be honest with you, um, on her form this season, in the was it the Hatton's Grace she ran in earlier in the season? I think even on that farm, she deserves to be favourite in this race. She's not deteriorated on time farm ratings anywhere near as much as people. I seem don't to think, think that the regression is anywhere near mm. what even the market thinks. And around so if she's seventy two four to one, I could I could see myself back in her. Right, it's time for the talker to stop. I want a day one best bet from you both, Matt. What are you going to put up? I am going to put up. Um, 
a real dart in the boodles, Fred Winter. We've had... Um, this is what we want. Go on, the boodles. Yeah, what have we had? Half a dozen, 25 to 1, or bigger winners of the boodles in the last decade, haven't we? And I'm going to swing for the hills in this race. One under, 10 stone three, right at the bottom for Jane Williams. Romancero Ladun is the selection. It's going to be 25, 33, maybe a bit of 40s. Um, he's he's unseated rider first time out, but he's won twice since. Won at Exeter, then he went to Ludlow. Sharp right-handed track just wasn't his thing. He still managed to beat um, an 80-rated flat recruit for Alan King called Admiralty House. It was it was a pretty good performance. He'll love soft ground. I really want to see this horse. Uh, there is a lot fair amount of early pace in the Boodles, I must be honest, but I'd love to see David Noonan boot him out. Go on. He, he's going to be a three-mile chaser, as connections have already stated. So he might well not be quick enough. I'd love to see him given a really prominent rider under a low weight. Soft, soft ground's going to suit him. Um, I think he could outrun his odds. Lovely. So 40 one for Matt. Higher or lower for Ben Linfoot's two? Lower. I'm thinking around 18, 20 to one. In the ultimate handicap chase, Dave, I like three under through five for, for Paul Nichols and the McNeil family. Um, a horse who comes out of that red hot Warwick Classic chase, which has been uh, thrown up the winners. Another one the other day in Volcano. Charlie Longdon's uh, horse came out and won as well. And uh, three under through five that day, he, he ran really well and he only faltered in the, in the closing stages. I don't think he stayed, but um, obviously drops in trip here. I think he's, he's still nicely treated. He's got a great record on the ground and I think he'll give us a good spin from the front end. There are a couple of speculative big price selections there for Ben and Matt on what is a fascinating opening day of the Cheltenham Festival. And don't forget to follow all the action live with us on sportinglife.com.